it's good to see you again. Ah, nice. Thanks. Yeah. Likewise. Where are you located now? Where I live? Yeah. Netherlands. Yeah, but where? I just moved to a, a very small uh, village. It's called Hogeswalue, which is in the south, southwest of, of the Netherlands. We, it's really like two streets and a church. It's nothing, oh. but, I, but we bought a beautiful house, really, wow. really big uh, uh, mansion, actually. It's, it's quite, quite uh, elaborate. So it's really cool. So I'm uh, really enjoying uh, uh, being in my, my grand house. Yeah, nice. a mansion. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And it's probably a lot more peaceful than... It's very quiet. Yeah, there, there are in, in the entire village, I think there are 1,500 people. So it's very small. Wow. And I used to live in this city. Uh, not a big city, but I used to live in the city and I was really totally fed up with uh, city life. So we just bought a house in the country. And uh, now uh, we enjoy, I, I really enjoy it because I have a big garden and I have a jacuzzi in my garden. So I, I wow. yeah, I'm spending my Corona free time very well. <laughs> Is it close enough to cities that you can still drive for work and everything? It's Netherlands. So, so everything's, everything's close. Yeah. Close. Oh, yeah. So nice. So 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 it's uh uh yeah everything is close. I, I'm I'm one hour away from Amsterdam, and I'm also one hour away from Brussels, which is in Belgium. Wow. So so both uh, airports are uh, within within the hour. I can be there if without traffic, of course. But uh, in, in normal circumstances, I can be there in one hour. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's perfect. How are things with the virus there now? Everything. Uh, we we uh, at, at the moment we are in lockdown. So uh, I, I had a company over today, which is actually uh, not allowed. I had a few people over. Uh, naughty, naughty. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> but we but we did a very. I well, we walked about uh, eight miles uh, oh, wow. in, in the in the country, and then we had dinner. <clears throat> so uh, so so it was not that bad. But uh, we, everybody has to be have to be uh, at their home at nine o'clock because mm -hmm. then we have curfew. We can't go out at nine o'clock. Right. So that's uh, that's what it is. But uh, I, I <clears throat> to me, uh, it's not that bad. I'm enjoying my house, and uh, uh, it is what it is. Yeah, it's like that. The curfew in Montreal as well. I'm not there, yeah. but um, I've heard that Quebec they're doing something like that too. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's the final phase now because uh, the people are now getting uh, uh, injected with uh, with uh, with uh, the, the vaccine. So I think it's about two or three months more, and then I think the majority of the country will be uh, vaccinated, and hopefully then things can go back to uh, a more normal situation. Yeah. Do you remember your last concert before everything? Yes, it was it was last year. Yeah, I had a few little concerts in between, but but they are really uh, it was really really small. But the last concert was in um, I was in Norway actually last last February. So it's, it was a, 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 almost a year ago. No, no, actually it was more than a year ago. And I had a concert in Oslo, and then we got home, uh, or we already heard there in while I was in Oslo. There, there's this big virus from China coming, and uh, and then we got into uh, the airplane back and there was a football team from china <laughs> so mm -hmm. everybody was like oh shit this <laughs> is uh <laughs> everybody was scared but of course it's ridiculous and then we came home and uh yeah then we got into the situation everything got cancelled i got a i had a major tour of north america and canada uh oh. planned i was actually was supposed to play with new york in uh, april the symphony yeah or the philharmonic um, wow. yeah and and uh it got cancelled. Yeah. So uh, that was that's But basically, that's the only thing which was to me a little bit uh, shitty, uh, because that was, of course, a very special would have been a very special concert. <clears throat> On the other hand, uh, I was very relieved to have like this year of doing well, not doing nothing. I didn't do nothing because, of course, I practiced and I planned for for other stuff, but not to travel because uh, it was I was so fed up and so tired. And I was last year at the beginning of the year, I thought, oh my God, how, how in heaven's name am I going to cope with my schedule for the rest of the year? Because I had to be in Brazil, I had to be in America, I had to be in Canada and in Europe. And uh, uh, I basically had enough. And then Corona came and everything got canceled. And <laughs> <laughs> I just enjoyed life, doing yeah. nothing, staying at home, yeah. practicing. 
and uh, and of course this this allowed me to get uh, to buy a new house uh, with my partner. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, things things really worked out. Uh, of course, now I hope uh, not for me personally, but for for the majority that things will change back to normal as soon as possible. But to me, up till now, I I actually had a good time. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. There's some blessings there, right? To me, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I, I I started some some new projects. I studied percussion. Uh, that was my major, uh, my, my my first instrument, and in, uh, which I studied because theremin can't be studied. There's not an official mm-hmm. study. So uh, because of uh, Corona, I was able to to get in contact with my former teacher, percussion teacher who brought me to the conservatory and he plays also a lot of percussion, uh, strange percussion instruments, such as a hang. Do you know what a hang is? It's like no. this, this pen that looks like a UFO and you play oh. it like this. And it sounds sort of a bit like a steel pen, a steel okay. drum. Yeah. But um, uh, it's a very exotic instrument. And we, uh, we made an album together uh, with this, but, but completely improvised. So, so we just sat down and put on a record and just started playing and then of course we added it back to 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 what is uh so that of course was because of corona and the other album which i already told you about the classical yeah. album also got uh finally got done because we had the time now to to really rehearse and uh and record it yeah i'm very proud of it it's um uh, it's 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 uh, it's it's of, of course the first album which is out there the official album uh, which is officially released and it's released worldwide and uh and we were for the for the longest time we were doubting what should we record should do it should be because i'm like a romantic in my music taste i like the tchaikovsky's and rachmaninoff and all mm-hmm. that kind of but at, on the other hand i thought uh if i want to give credit to my instrument to the theremin i should record original music like really good original music and then of course i was blessed to get receive uh the score of Balera Auerbach, the 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 suite, the the, yeah. the temp temperament for Thurman. And I thought, well, this is a good basis for for the album. And then we found uh, we 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 found some other pieces which were very suitable. There's actually also a piece for Thurman, piano and percussion, in which I played both parts. So you can hear a little bit of my wow. percussion. Uh, uh, so so that was uh, uh, that album, which I'm really proud of. It turned out very very well. And now we are working on our second classical album, which will be a uh, romantic uh, French music. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, you studied with a cellist, which makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Well, I didn't really, really study like, like, okay. uh, it, it, it was, it was not a conservatory study. Uh, it was, I, of course, I graduated as a professionist. And then, of course, I was in the, of course, of course, uh, not of course, but I was, in, I came, I started playing in orchestras. And as a percussionist in the orchestra, uh, you probably know, you sit in the back and you count and you count, mm-hmm. you count more, and then you wait until the fourth movement of the symphony. And at the last eight bars, you can do boom, ching, boom, ching, boom, ching, and yeah. you're finished. So I was completely bored. It, I didn't like it. It was not what I uh, aspired to do because I wanted just to, to play and to perform and to, to do uh, uh, solo uh, pieces which of course I could have easily done as a percussionist, but uh, I happened to stumble on the theremin. I already knew about theremin. I, I always knew about it, but I didn't give it a second thought because I was very classical minded and very traditional in my ideas and uh, everything should be acoustic and not electronic. That was like not good. But of course I wasn't very pleased with being what, at, the, at what I did in the orchestra, I was bored. So uh, I, I thought about, I have to do something else. And I always was in love with uh, string instruments, especially violin, but also cello. But uh, I thought, well, let's try to see if I can play the violin, uh, which I tried for maybe one or two lessons. And I already thought immediately, hmm, it's a bit too late, I'm afraid. <laughs> I, will, I will never be able to play this well, because of course I can hear how I wanted it to sound, but I couldn't, I could, just couldn't. It, it was impossible, it was too late. And then at that, exactly at that same period, uh, I was very into uh, piano, violin music or piano, cello music. So I was downloading illegally 
uh, mm -hmm. all those music. And I happened to stumble on an album, which I didn't know, but it had Tchaikovsky and it had Rachmaninoff. So I was just interested in the composers. And I was listening to it and it turned out uh, so and I was listening and I was amazed by the phrasing and the and the tone color of and I thought well, well this is a very strange violin it sounds it sounds a bit weird uh, and I couldn't place it because it was in between a violin and a cello and uh, it turned out to be Clara Rockmore she is the, the virtuoso of the of the thereminists she's she's amazed she's like God of of the theremin <laughs> and uh, and I was and I fell in love with her playing uh, and uh, I was so amazed that I thought, oh, I have to do this. This is like, this is me. I need to do this. So long story short, I finally got a theremin. And in the meantime, before I got one, I had read about it so much and I was uh, doing research. And um, uh, that when it came, I could immediately play. Like instantly, I set it up and I could play I don't, uh, something by Bach. I don't remember exactly what I played, but I could immediately distract the melody from it, which was totally yeah. different from the experience with the violin. So I thought this is like the thing I need to do. So I opened the door, took the theremin, closed the door and run as far as I get. So just to, to get on that path of, of theremin playing, uh, which of course can get you so far because one way or another, you need some guidance. And of course there are not very uh, theremin players, very, very, uh, a, a lot of theremin players who are as, as accomplished that they can teach you. At least there was no, no one in the Netherlands. So I was lucky to have some friends at the Concertgebouw Orchestra. And the cellist there, uh, I asked her uh, if, she, if she could help me. And at first she says, no, I don't know. I don't know this instrument. I don't have no idea how to teach you. And yeah, and I feel, but maybe only musically coach me. You, you don't have to say technically, but maybe just musically coach me a little bit. So. Uh, I, I can know what to do with vibrato or whatever. I said, okay, well, come, come one afternoon and we'll just check it out. So I came to her uh, and, and she said, what are you going to play? She said, well, I'm going to play the vocalist by Rachmaninoff. Uh, you know this piece, obviously, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, of course, it's a da da da. And I just played the first two, two half notes of three half notes. And she immediately said, stop, you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> and I thought, what? <laughs> and she immediately saw uh, that the, the pitch field of a theremin is basically the string of a cello or a violin. She said, wow. look, at, look at how I'm playing and listen to how I'm playing, how I phrase uh, and how I change the notes and how I use my vibrato, etc. All, all those little details and try to mimic that on your theremin. And uh, already in this, in this hour, we only work on these three notes, like this G, F sharp, G. And uh, uh, it changed, it, immediately it changed. So I thought, oh, I need to continue with her. And she was also very excited because she noticed I made some progress. And I, was, I went to her house every week for about two years. And uh, well, that really uh, uh, improved my playing a lot. So that's the cello story. That's so cool. <laughs> so how old were you when you when you started that then, when you started the theremin? Oh, it's, uh, I think I was uh, 25 or something. Wow. Uh, 24, 25. Yeah. That's amazing. I used to play a lot of marimba and xylophone. But the funny thing is I was also always an uh, atypical uh, percussionist because of course you have very good pieces for percussion, like, like uh, marimba pieces, really original piece. And I always chose to play like transcriptions of violin concertos. Yeah. So, I play, <laughs> so I play the Bach concerto, I play Bruch concerto, I play Chardas, like the, those pieces, like those. Wow. those uh, and I was always like, oh, I, I need to do those, those violin pieces. I played the, 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 the Ronde de Caprice by Saint-Saëns and uh, wow. I did all those pieces on the, on the marimba. That would be uh, but, so hard on marimba. No, actually, it's not as so hard. I think it's it's easier on the marimba than on the on the violin, actually. Oh, okay. The 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 the, the especially the Saint-Saëns piece because yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, of course I can't really tell because I'm not a violinist, but I think it's easier because it's not that difficult. Maybe the last page is a bit tricky, but <laughs> uh, it's it's not that not, not that difficult. But um, it was never completely satisfying satisfying because. 
Uh, yeah. You never have like those long notes which a violin can make, and you can't do the vibrato, and it's always tick 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 tick. You know, it's always pluck a pluck a pluck a pluck because right. you you have to do uh, tremolo. You can't play long notes. Yeah, the sustain. So, yeah, the sustain is not there. Of course, of course, you can mimic a sustain, but then you can't do the vibrato, so you can't really. You, you have to express yourself in a different way than than uh, I do now on on the theremin because now if I uh, do a long note, I can express with vibrato and I can make it intenser. Or I can the only thing I could do with the marimba is go a lot softer or or louder or increase the speed of my uh, uh, tremolo, which was uh, at that at that point of time it was it was uh, satisfying. But after a while, I thought oh, I really want to do this vibrato and I want to do that. And well, the theremin basically the theremin saved my my musical sanity or how do you say it? Yeah, it was really yeah. it was a lifesaver. Wow. It really struck me listening again this morning to your your album. It's really <laughs> feels like a mixture between yeah, cello, violin, but also the voice, right? It's very exactly. very, very exactly. vocal. Especially vocal is uh, of course I tend to 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 go towards uh if you if you compare because basically you shouldn't compare it should be just theremin sound. Uh, but of course we are people, so we always look for comparison. And mm -hmm. uh, and I usually tend to go to st string instruments, but it's usually the violin. But if you really listen, uh, and I think that's also the the the, the aspect of the term in which makes it makes it really interesting, is that it has this human quality. It has this singing, especially in, the, in a certain register. If you go into the soprano register, it really. Uh, it's almost like somebody is singing without words, without, uh, it's, it's really crazy uh, yeah. how, how close it comes to the human voice, especially if it's in, with, with an electronic instrument, because usually you think with electronics, like cold and uh, yeah. not, uh, and, and, but the theremin you can make very expressive and you can make it very warm and uh, uh, yeah, totally. I think most people think when you say theremin, they think like scary. Uh, creepy music right right well, yeah which is also possible of course but it's very uh it has a very warm quality to it i think at least uh that's what i try to do that it's a beautiful instrument it's kind of i mean you must get a lot of comments and questions people more than any other instrument it's kind of it's like it seems like magic, right? Like when it seems like magic. And the, and the funny thing is, uh, because I'm, or at least I consider myself a serious uh, um, classical musician. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have never experienced with any other soloist, soloist that afterwards uh, people go to them and really ask all those questions. It's uh, and also, can I try your instrument? Nobody in the, in their mind <laughs> would ask a, 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 a famous violinist, "Can I try your violin?" No. You yeah. Know, of, course, and of course, I let it try it, and I always make a joke: as long as you don't touch it, and yeah, then yeah. everybody is laughing. So, but it's it's really it's it really is uh, because it's so uh, out there. So so it's the 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 impact is so great that. People just go over uh, any shame and just walk up to me. And uh, I, I, I remember I had concerts where they really had to drag me out of a group of people because uh, they need to continue with the program. And there were so many people uh, disturbing the rest of the program. It's, it's, I can uh, imagine. Well, you yeah. when I saw you play, it seemed like you were, um, and I am a classical musician, but it seemed yeah. like you were still a, mus uh, a magician, like the way yeah. you watching it like it's such a visual thing too you know like hearing it is beautiful but the visual aspect of watching um that instrument be performed and performed well is unbelievable. yeah but the thing is uh, and that's that's my personal uh uh goal uh and i hope i achieve it uh, uh as often as possible is that uh i that when i people come to a concert to uh, especially in a live setting of course, the first few minutes, everybody's like, what, what is this? <laughs> but I really hope after that, that people forget about, oh, he's playing in the air and just listen to what I have to say, because I really am trying my best to interpret it, interpret uh, classical music uh, or, or, or contemporary classical music or whatever. But in any case, I'm, I'm, I'm a musician, I'm making music and I'm not, I'm not there as a circus 
uh, yes. Yes. Uh, act. You know, it's that, that's 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 not what I try. That's not what I try to bring. Uh, although that's very easy because uh, I'm I'm practicing my 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 ass off to to be as perfect as possible. And if I would play very bad, people would still like it probably because uh, uh, because of the effect of playing in the air, because people are so amazed by that. But I don't think that is what the instrument instrument makes special. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what, uh, because that's just that's just how it's played. What is special is the the the, the what like what I already told you the, the warmth and the expression you can get from from that instrument, and it has a completely different voice than any other instrument uh, sure. out there. Yeah. Because it sounds, uh, it can sound like a violin, but if you, for instance, play with string quartet, it can blend very perfectly, and it sounds beautifully. It blends beautifully, but you always hear there's an odd duck. Uh, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In that group, so it's, right. it's the color it's all, sticks out. The color sticks out, but yeah. it blends like crazy. Especially when I play with string quartet, that's like the best thing you can do, at least to me. It's beautiful. It blends like crazy, but you always, you 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 always stick out. So it's uh, uh, and that's because it has its own voice. It's not a, a copy of the violin, right? Uh, uh, I think. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. It's completely different, but it yeah, has yeah. that same singing, similar singing quality to it. Well, it has a lot of similarities, uh, similarities with, 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 with the string players in general. Uh, but, but uh, of course, the, the, the biggest difference between uh, a theremin and a, and a string player is that a string player has four strings. Mm -hmm. And I have just one very big, long, yeah. one, one very big, long, uh, long, long string, which is, uh, uh, Easy, but on the other hand, uh, it's not as virtuos, virtuosic, virtu virtuosic. Yep. Are you so? Yeah, as a, as a violin, because as a violin can just jump strings and go quickly. And I need to, if I want to, for instance, jump an octave, I have to put my entire hand like this to jump. I was curious, what does your, what's your like, your warm up routine, your your practice? on the theremin like before you practice are there things that you do yeah you I, uh, scales of course of scales of course skills and chords it's it's the same it's basically yeah. the same as, as, as other is because uh you have to have uh, you have to have your um physical memory correct because uh, uh my my the theremin is very linear so so which means that every every note is spaced equally instead of like in, with the violin when the, the, the more up you go the more smaller the movements i think uh, yeah. the, the 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 positions are yeah with my theremin it's not so if i go in the upper octave like in the highest reg register the the distance of the notes are exactly the same than they are in the lowest register which is about 8 octaves lower so uh that's easy and in that case because of that uh, you can develop like uh, a finger technique, uh, like in positions. You think in positions. For instance, if you have this this as a as as a begin note, let's say this is C. So this is a closed position, and I do this. Mm -hmm. So I open my hand. I jump to the octave. So this is, should always be an octave, and this should always be like a fifth. So you have like this positions which you focus on. That that's what you practice. And then, of course, you can add a third. And then if you have the, 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 the first, the third, the fifth, and the eighth, uh, you have the chord. Then you can make it major minor and uh, diminish, et cetera. And then, of course, you can do scales. So it's, it's basically like any other instrument. You just do all those, uh, those things. It's, it's right. not, not, not much different than, uh, than, than what you have to do. But I guess it's sort of the next level up in terms of muscle memory yeah, well yeah the, the, I mean, again, we, have, if you, we don't have frets but we still have a physical well the, what, what's most important is you have loose snares you yeah know, as a violin has a g d uh, whatever a e yeah. uh, which is always there uh yeah. I, I don't have that yeah so yeah. but the funny thing is i always tune to a g Oh, so I, yeah, yeah, I always tune to a G. So I always make sure that the the your the violin G, the low the low string G, mm -hmm. is here, and then I have the octaves up. And when I go back, I just go back a little bit. So I always tune on that note. So I don't know why, but it's. Uh, do you do you visualize a lot when you're playing? Like, no. do you have a no? You no. Think no, I I only think in sound uh, because okay. there's nothing to see. 
okay. you, you can't visualize because even if you can't, if you can, uh, I, I don't know, even, I, I can't even make an, make an example. The, the, you, there's nothing to visualize. It's you literally play air. So the only thing you can rely on is the control of your body because your body has to be motionless because even if you breathe too much, like if you breathe high, if you're, if you're, if you're nervous, then your chest comes up which means if your chest comes up, that your arms changes and that already can make the difference of half of a half a note. So you need to have control over this, then you need to have control over, your, over these, these, your arms, and then you can just play. Uh, I forgot your question. I'm just talking so much. No, no, <laughs> it's, it's good. Actually, you, you kind of, you're touching on all the things I was curious about because, you know, this visual, like for me, I, I can't help but like I'm always thinking in pictures. I always, I'm always visualizing. I don't even try. And I wondered whether that was something that, um, that helps you play. Because they, you have people who visualize and you have people who don't visualize. And you are probably one who, who visualizes, like you say, I never do that. I, I, I always do it. I don't know how I do it, but I never visualize because I don't know what to visualize because there's nothing right. to see. Right. Uh, but if you play, you you also can't see really your instrument. You know, like for string players, when we have when we have nerves on stage, we'll get you know a shaky bow, for example, or that's I the, get shaky everything. That's the classic <laughs> one, right? The shaky yeah. bow. I, I was wondering, like, do you do you get nervous, and how how does that? You don't get nervous? No. Wow. I get I get nervous? Uh, not nervous, but I get anxious. Okay. Just before I go on. The minute I start, I, I start, I just, I don't have nerves. Okay. I, uh, I, of course, sometimes, you know, oh, this is a difficult passage and you are aware of it, but it doesn't affect. It does go like, 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 like that I start shaking or I have, I don't know how I do it, but I have enough control to, uh, to control everything. So, so of, I'm not going to say that I'm totally free of, of any nerves because nobody is that, that cold. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I am, I'm very luck. I'm very blessed actually to, to be, uh, uh, to have luck in that department because I'm not really, I'm not a stressful per person in general, uh, also in normal life. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm very easy. So I just did, did like the, the few minutes before, like, oh, I have to go on stage. But as, as the, the moment I start and I know right. the theremin works, I just go and have, try to have fun. Right, because I, because I think that's also important because I think that uh, uh, translate to the audience because if there's somebody on the stage who is really nervous, uh, people uh, uh, feel that they feel right. it, and then even and, and uh, even if you play like like the most beautiful in the world, people would still say you were nervous, weren't you? Uh, right. So that's so, the worst to hear. Too. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. And of course, everybody is nervous. You have to perform. You have to do something really personal in front of a group of people who are going to judge you afterwards. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, there's no, not a musician who is not nervous, but the thing is how you deal with it. And I am, I am lucky, I guess, because I, I, I know a lot of people who are very different, they have different experience. I am lucky that when I finally arrive at my place, I sit in my chair because I sit, I play, play sitting. Yeah, the minute I start playing, it's it's I'm I'm focused on that and I'm not stressed anymore. Right. At least at least not to the point that I can't control myself. Right. Yeah, because the physical aspect of it, that's what I was wondering is how how it would physically manifest with the theremin. If someone were to have nerves, you were saying you'd get tight in here and then well, you, you, nervous, nervous. Usually when you get nervous, you start start to breathe high. Right. Uh, instead of like low which is the good thing uh, and like i said when you start playing high this goes up and down when this starts to go up and down there's no way you can control your arms because they will move the, your body works like that uh, so so uh and another thing is of course uh uh control over the vibrato so th th that the muscles give in here so that you don't come to the vibrato or that the vibrato goes like crazy, that you get a vibrato from with this, with a with uh, with a fifth, you know, like really big. Yeah. So so there are certain aspects uh, of uh, of how you can tell somebody is is nervous on the fairway. Uh, but right. yeah, 
I'm lucky not to have yeah. uh, uh, have it. Uh, yeah. Because I think it's just music. I'm not uh, doing brain surgery on somebody. You know, I'm not changing the world. I'm just doing something for myself. So I, I try when I when I go and say, I try to make it like smaller and more to me instead of. Uh, and all the head the entire world is going to change if I play one bad note. Right. Um, which which used to bother me a lot uh, afterwards. You, not not before, but afterwards. Like, like oh, uh, the, the dead passage could have been clearer or whatever. And now I think, oh, whatever. It's, uh, uh, I tried my best. And in general, the, the, the concert was cool. And I had, uh, everybody had fun. I had fun. And maybe it wasn't the best. But uh, it was still a good performance because if there's only one note, it doesn't mean the entire performance is bad. But right. I think that's what I just learned the last few years. Uh, right. Because before I just wanted to have everything perfect, which is impossible. If so, if people want to study theremin, they they have to seek out a specific teacher that's not necessarily affiliated with a school, right? Because most most conservatories probably don't have theremin. There's no conservatory yet because theremin is too new. It's there's not there, actually actually there's not a theremin school. Uh, like the, it's nothing, nothing. That's that's the problem. That's the, the good thing of the instrument, but it's also the bad thing because you can you can't compare. Uh, we we only have Clara Rockmore to compare ourselves about. That's like the high standard of theremin, mm -hmm. uh, where you as a violinist have like. Uh, you stand on the tradition of of hundreds of years of of, of yeah. very great musicians who who were like very virtuosic on the theremin uh, on the on the violin. Sorry, so there, there's a big difference, and also you can compare your technique. You can say uh, you have a Russian violin school, I think, and you have maybe a French violin school, I don't know, or German or whatever, uh, and you can just follow that and. Uh, uh, and, and compare yourself and, and measure yourself to somebody else. With Thurman, it's impossible. Uh, people can measure themselves to me now, for instance, but that would be ridiculous, you know, because uh, I'm there and they are still there and there's nothing in between. Uh, so you don't have like, uh, like in the conservatory, you have students from the first year and the second year, and then you have the people from the fourth year who are really great. So right. you have something to achieve and with the theremin. It's not possible. It's not there. So uh, we, uh, what is important is that there's a school established uh, of the theremin, which uh, in which people can measure themselves, and then uh, a tradition starts, and then maybe in fifty or sixty years, uh, it will settle, and then uh, it will be an official instrument and not as. Uh, uh, lose it as it is now because I can play uh, and I can do it my way but my way shouldn't it is it doesn't mean that if the way I do it is that you can also play it like that so so it's for me the, the, the technique works for my physics but maybe for you it doesn't work so so uh, maybe there needs to be found something else which is more general I don't know it's it, 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 that, that's something time will tell the, but but again the instrument is new it's of course it's a hundred years old but uh basically it's about 20 years old because somewhere in the 90s it got uh, like a, a a renaissance of the theremin and it got uh known again and then people started playing so from that time uh the 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 history of the theremin started of course there's a history before but that's a dead history. You, there's nobody there who can tell, oh, we did it this way, or we did it. There's nobody who can do that. You know, it's only facts that, that those things happened, but there are no uh, recordings or no whatever. Uh, but now from, from the 90s on up till now, there are, uh, well, you, you can see uh, there are a few Thermans who did concertos. And the, so you can compare. So, so there's now a 30 year tradition which is nothing if you compare to violin or piano or clarinet or whatever. So it's just, it's new. It takes time. That's exciting though. You're on the... Well, yeah, that is really, that, that's what I really love because I, I feel like I'm always like trailblazing. Is that, is that how you call it? Yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, yeah trailblazing uh, oh, and, and finding new ways to incorporate the theremin uh, in, 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 well, not class, but in general, in music in general, because 
uh, of course, you have with electronics. You can do, uh, you can add loop stations or you can add effect pedals. So there are so many more possibilities to then just play melody on the on the thermos. So it's it's very exciting to trailblaze uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and 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 to see where where, where me personally. Uh, can push myself to, to 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 get because now also with tech with the technically for the new album which you are recording I'm doing uh, the full Cesar Frank sonata. Oh my goodness! I'm so <laughs> excited to hear that. Wow. Yes, it's, it's it's and the of course of course it needs to be a transcription, mm -hmm. but there are only I think there are about ten bars which can't be played on the theremin. For the rest, it can be be exactly as 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 written for the wow. violin uh, on the theremin, uh, which is really pushing the envelope, of course. It's it's mm -hmm. difficult, but uh, it really gives me great satisfaction to to be able to because I can oh, I can I can play the entire move, all movements can play play them now. So hopefully uh, when um, when Corona ends, uh, we can start doing tryouts. And we will we will we will we will record it somewhere uh, at the end of summer. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's so it's so awesome talking to you. Very inspiring. Oh. It's nice. Oh to well, likewise, you. likewise. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Talk soon. Bye bye. Bye.